sometimes if you happen to have a thin spot, like I'm gonna deliberately make a thin spot. If you keep your hands in one spot too long, you will get a thin spot. Now I'm going to take my scored coil. I'm going to put this on here. And I'm going to take my knife and I'm gonna trim these ends so they match up. This is a personal choice. You don't necessarily have to do this. I just want to show you how you can make it nice and tidy. And I'll dab a little bit more slip on there. I'm going to just scoot this a little closer so it's easier for me to reach. Okay. So with these ends connected, I can then just blend them together nicely. I'm not going to blend the outer edge. I want to leave the distinction between the coil and the base, but what I do want to do is I want to make sure that I get the inside blended. If I left the pot like this, it is temporarily holding it in place, but that wall would probably pop off eventually as it dries. What I want to do is I want to make sure that I blend it thoroughly, make sure that the interior edge is smooshed into the base. Now I'm using a wooden tool. If you prefer, you could just use, say, your finger. There we go. Okay, now this is permanent. As that dries, that will definitely be secure. That's not going to go anywhere. That's not going to be falling off. the next item, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a coil, which is a rope. And to do that, I'm going to fold this in half and make two smaller sections. Now, I like to thin each section of my rope out a little bit. If I have two pieces that I'm putting together, it's going to be very thick if I don't thin them. So I like to thin them first, get them thinner than the normal coils, and then as I twist them together, it will be more equivalent to one regular coil after they're twisted back together again. There we go. So those look fairly even. You wanna watch for things like dents and cracks. If your clay is nice and plastic, you shouldn't have too much trouble. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to moisten this with a sponge because your clay does get dry, obviously, from rolling on the table, and adding a little moisture to it will help it not to crack so much. Now, you wanna stick your coils together side by side. That water will help them to get stuck. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take about midway on the coil, about halfway, I'm going to take and twist one half of it. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to twist the other half. If you see areas where maybe it's not twisted as much as another, you can even that out so they all have an even appearance. It looks somewhat awkward sometimes if you have one really loose area and a really tight area. Okay, that looks fairly good. Now, when I'm going to add this on, it's of course going to be a little difficult to score this, but I'm gonna tell you something. On the day that you build your piece, when you have soft clay with soft clay, you can a lot of times just skip the scoring stage. I'll go ahead and add a little slip right here. But my clay is very plastic that I'm presently using, so I can kind of get away with skipping the scoring. But from day to day, you must score and slip when you add new to old. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim these ends I'm going to just move this again closer so that one's lean. And there we go. As I trim that, I want to try to get the ends to appear that they're matching up slightly. Okay, and let's do a little scoring right there. And a little slip. Now that I have this coil laying on here, while it's still very soft and plastic, you need to get it blended. Every day when you add clay on, that clay must be blended by the end of class. 
if you leave it and expect to come in the next day to blend it, it will not work because it's gonna dry and get a little tougher and a little stiffer overnight. So you do not want it to be left unblended at the end of a work session. Okay, all right, there's our root. Now, the next one that I wanna show you is I wanna show you how you can do uh, little spheres. And actually, they're not quite spheres. They look more like, say, a raindrop or something. If you want them to all be the same, roll a coil and cut them equally in length. Or if you want them random, do some little and some quite large, and then you'll have a variety of sizes. I'm going to go ahead and roll these, and then I'll show you what to do after I roll them. Okay, now you can see that I've taken the little spheres and I've rolled them, but again, they're not quite spheres. They're more like a raindrop. They're, they have kind of a tail at one end and round at the other. Now, you can do any sort of variation with this that you might want to. I've had people kind of use this concept but create entirely different shapes. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to set these on the wall and note that the tails will be sticking inward. And the tails are the part that actually get blended. I'll just kind of stack these up there. Okay, now if you can see this, where the, the ends of the tails are, and again, I'll just bring this closer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to gently hold the outside to keep me from pushing them over. And I'm going to take the little tails and kind of swoosh the tails together. This is a bit of a tricky thing to do sometimes, but just be careful. If you do little amounts at a time, it's sometimes easier. There we go. So that little section was not so bad to do. And then of course I could continue to build up with more of those if I want, okay? You can see the inside is totally blended where those come together. Okay. Next I have another technique and this is kind of referred to as a snail coil because it's wrapped up like a little snail. What I'm gonna do is take my coil and wet it and then I like to taper the tip so I can roll it into itself. I like to taper it just because I think it's a little bit easier that way. And then I'll roll it up. And usually there's a good side and a poor side. So I usually try to put the good side toward the outside. So I'm just going to stick that right there on the wall, kind of temporarily holding in place. And I want to make a few more of graduated sizes because as you're thinking about your designs, remember you want to think about things like um, elements and principles of design, pattern, you want to think about uh, rhythm, uh, shape, movement, things like that. So I'm going to make a few more of these and then I'll come back okay. and show you. Now I have placed a variety of sizes I have like big to medium to small and I wanted to create a lo little sense of rhythm there and uh, they're, they're really quite fun they're not blended on the back yet because I wanted to show you two more techniques that you might like I'm I've got another snail coil that I'm starting but instead of wrapping only one end I'm gonna wrap both so this is quite fun you can imagine you could have one end quite large one end quite sm small so I will put that on there. Of course, they can go in any direction as well. And then I'll do one more where this is wrapped in the very same direction. Of course, that's, that's a little baby one, but that gives you an idea. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna blend. But I'm going to hold the outside gently with one hand and blend with the other hand. I like to describe the outside holding as, as in if you were to cradle like a baby's head very gently. You just want to hold it in place as you blend on the inside. Now, as you blend, you need to make sure that you blend all clay coils as they touch one another. So 
blend where they touch top to bottom and side to side. So if there's a crease between coils side to side, like here, I need to get that blended. Okay, and again, blend on the day that you put the clay on. Don't wait 24 hours to try to blend the next day. Okay, um, next, I'll kind of show you what you can do. Uh, let's say if you wanted to have something where you create a coil where it waves. Well, you can put in periodic elements, like you could put in a, a coil, a snail coil, and then a, have a space and another snail coil. And you could just quite simply take a coil that goes up and over. So say for instance, like on this, I'm gonna trim the end first. Okay. So I could have this go up and over and then maybe end it right there on that side. I'll trim that as well. So it kind of frames it in. That gives you another idea. Okay, next I have another kind of a coil. I kind of refer to this one as a fence. So I've got a regular coil here. I'm going to add some water to the surface so it's not gonna crack. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bend this back and forth. Now you can imagine this can lead to all sorts of possibilities of things that you could create out of this. Okay, there we go. I will just trim this. And I'm just going to kind of stick it on the wall temporarily. As I get more things built to the side, it will be more stable in a minute. Okay. Uh, next, kind of going on with this idea that I had uh, shown you earlier, um, I want to show you how you can do sort of a, a rainbow sort of an effect. central piece or you can do it without a central piece and just have a, you know a hole I'm gonna do it with a central piece just to kind of show you so I have my coil I'm gonna wrap it around a central piece I'm gonna to continue to wrap there we go and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a knife and I'm gonna trim them so they're somewhat even there we go. And then this one, I'll put over here. Okay. And I, maybe I'll go ahead and get that blended, just to be on the safe side, too. Since I have two rather large elements, I want to make sure that they're not going to fall off. And so not only do I connect it to the clay that's underneath, but again, I must connect the insides of the clay to one another. If you fail to do that, the whole thing could fall apart on you. Okay. All right, and I'll get this one over here too. Now, with something like this, if I want to leave a hole, I could leave a hole. I'll just connect where the clay is touching, and if it's not touching there, I'll just leave it. And as you're blending, just think of whatever way makes it easiest to blend. If you go side to side, up, down, diagonal, as long as you get it blended. Okay, so those are attached now. I'm going to bend this around a little bit more so it has a little bit more of that oval curve to it. You can see that this is getting bigger um, by placing the coil slightly to the outside of the last ones. I was able to get it bigger. 